Today I want to talk about overcoming fear and insecurity. And the title of my message today is called Empowered to Prevail. The scripture I'm focusing on is Judges, the 6th and 7th chapter. And in these chapters we learn of the story of Gideon. Because it's too much to read, I'm just going to kind of summarize what happened in these chapters. Basically what's happened is the Israelites have done evil in the eyes of the Lord, so God allowed them to be oppressed by the Midianites. The Israelites literally had to struggle for existence, and they were poverty-stricken. They cried out to the Lord for deliverance, but they didn't receive it. Now, there was a man named Gideon who was from a poor family, and he was also the youngest son in that family, which made him the least important at the time. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and told him that he was the one that was chosen to deliver Israel from the Midianites. But in fear and insecurity, Gideon didn't believe him. Angel said, no, you are the chosen one, and you must do what you're told. So he did. Reluctantly, after he finally understood that this was an angel of the God, from God, he, uh, he trusted and obeyed. And the first thing he did was tear down altars that had been built for Baal. Now, um, these altars signified idol worship and putting things in place of God or before God. And then he set out in faith and organized the men of Israel to get them ready to fight. He started with 32,000 men, but God said, that's too many men. Um, so he said, take those 32,000 men and ask them if any are afraid that they could turn around and go home. From that 32,000, 22,000 men left. He was only down to 10,000 men. Gideon was told by God that that's still too many men, and, put him, and God put him to another test of faith. God said... Take those 10,000 men down to the water and drink. Most of them got on their hands and knees and drank the water. But 300 men kneeled down and cupped the water with their hands and lapped the water from their hands. God said, by these 300 men that cupped the water and drank from their hands, you will fight with these men. So now the odds are 450 to 1 in the Midianites' favor. Gideon has an army of 300. God literally has to perform a miracle based on these odds. And he did so. When it was time for battle, God brought fear and confusion upon the Midianites, and each one of them started to fight against themselves to get the victory. Gideon and the Israelites got the victory with an army of 300 based on the miraculous move of God and the trust and the obedience of Gideon, the leader of the army. So what can we learn from this story? Well, first of all, we learn that we need to trust and obey. Take time and reflect and trace the footsteps in your life. Determine where you are today and what things you need to overcome in your life. What is your personal Midian army? It could be something like debt, a health problem, Addiction, a broken marriage, grief, a loss of a loved one, whatever it is, learn to trust God and obey him in every step of your life, every step of your journey, ultimately to gain the victory in the end. Maybe you're where you are because you made some poor decisions and you've been disobedient to God's word and you find yourself in a temporary defeat, but you can still get the victory if you trust and obey God. Gideon may have not had the advantage because, or he may have seemed to have an advantage to you or me because he actually had an angel visit him. He had a divine visitation that gave him the instructions to do what he needed. Now, God doesn't communicate with the, this way with everybody all the time, but we can still learn to hear God's voice by getting into his word and listening to that voice inside, getting a word from someone else that speaks into our life. We're just vessels used for God, imperfect and inadequate, but we always gain victory when we allow God's power to be used in our life, because it's not in our own power, but in God's power. Once Gideon was able to get over his own personal fear and insecurities from being from a poor family, from being the last born, he was able to be a strong leader and go forward in the power of God. And then he began to build his army. 
Let's look specifically at Judges chapter 7, the second and third verse. It says, The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, Anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, and 10,000 remained. So I'd already discussed how this happened earlier, but the key point in this scripture was like, My own strength has saved me. So with all those 32,000 men, God had to literally subtract from them to, see, to show that they were weak, to show that they couldn't do this on their own. And there was no way that they can give any of the credit or any of the glory to anyone else but God. So in life, let's look at the cards that you're dealt. As you see the resources around you start to dwindle, whatever they may be, remember God will be glorified and hold on to your calling and hold on to your promise. And being a leader, I'm speaking to other leaders who are out there. Um, anyone who's committed themselves to a lifestyle of faith, like I have, um, just remember that no matter what, no matter what the odds seem to be against you, you need to trust and obey and believe that you've heard clearly from God and move forward in that strength. Like I said, since I've committed my life to doing the things that God wants me to do, God loves to test me in this way. It seems like every time... I'm about to get a promotion, I get stripped, literally, of all the resources that I think that I need to get to the next level. So in the end, God could show me that it was him and not me. I want you to remember this formula. One man or one woman or, let's put it like this, you or me, multiplied by God's power equals victory, no matter what the odds. As long as we have the power of God, we will achieve the victory. God is a God who adds by subtracting. God is not a man. God is God. Trust and obey the commands to gain victory in your life against all odds. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. God will take someone inadequate and make them strong in his strength. Gideon had to be delivered from the spirit of fear to get the victory. We can see this as the numbers were being removed from him. In Judges chapter 5 and 8, it says, <clears throat> So Gideon took the men down to the water. This was the second test. To separate those, God, the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues as dogs laps from those who kneel down to drink. 300 of them drank from cupped hams, lapping like dogs. All the rest of them, down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give you the Midianites into your hands. Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300. Now, in this illustration, many people have um, broken it down into a lot of different ways, but one of the things that really st stood out to me was how the posture of these men the posture of the men who got on their knees and put their face down so that they were inconfident, they were insecure, they're unconfident, they're insecure, and they weren't ready for battle. The men who kneeled down and gathered the water in their hands and then lapped it out of their hands so that they still had their heads up and they were confident and they were ready to go. And God used these 300 men. There was no, much, there was no more fear. There was no more insecurity. Even though his numbers were long, even though his numbers were low, down to 300 men, he took away the things that can hinder us from getting victory. Not only did God show us that he could do a lot with a little, but he also had to get fear out of the way. If we don't gain fear, if we don't gain victory over fear, what kind of witness will we really be in life? There's a lot of times where we can tremble and fear and have our head down and still get the victory because of the grace of God. But at the end of the day, where's the glory? People will be watching our lack of trust. They'll be seeing um, that we have fear and, and whatever we're going through. At the end of the day, when we get there, you know, our personal ministries become less effective because we didn't have a good example to show of how we handled adversity, however we handled a situation that seemed bigger than us. We didn't let God's power get the complete glory that it deserved 
because we always either complained or had fear or, or something that was keeping us to the point where we couldn't show that we were confident and strong and we were walking in faith and boldness and courage. Remember this, if God be for you, then no one can be against you. When God gives you a word, keep your eyes on him. Keep your ears to heaven and take steps towards victory.